Whew. All right, baby. Another Marvel show. Let's go ahead and get her done. Ayo. Ayo, what's going on? Where's... Yo, where's the original Marvel intro? Yo, I've never seen this before. Oh. Uh oh. <sighs> So Disney Plus's Echo has been streaming for about a week now, and to be honest, sometimes I think to myself, if shows like this weren't attached to the Marvel brand, would they be better, made with more care and craft to become a more engaging watch for the audience as its own original story? Or is the Marvel brand the only attachment that keeps an idea such as Echo afloat, an attachment or branding that makes a show like this avoid their inevitable fate of being a dead-on-arrival show and just another run-of-the-mill, forgettable, and uninspired tomato can swept to the wayside in the never-ending and brain-dead streaming war. A show that's just in and out of the memory bank in less than T-minus two minutes as you wave goodbye to just another season one cancellation. It's hard to know, but what I do know is that for the most part, I'm doing the majority of those aforementioned dead-on-arrival season one cancellations a disservice because in reality, Disney Plus's Echo, Marvel's Echo, just Echo, whatever you want to call it, barely even qualifies as a show at all. Hey yo, what the? Okay. Well, that doesn't mean I'm saying that the show is bad or good, definitely not saying that. It's just hard to come to a conclusion or even know how to go about approaching reviewing, or even discussing a show such as Echo when so many of the elements and aspects that go into storytelling are just as invisible and non-existent as your dad on Thanksgiving. In a time where it probably would have just been better to cancel the show financially, along with some others that I won't name now, the question is, when a studio poops and asks you, the audience, to ingest a clearly half-scrapped five-episode-long show, devoid of any meaningful character arcs or character growth aside from the protagonist, pacing that rivals the time that it takes to watch paint dry, Mickey Mouse and copycat action sequences that don't hold any weight compared to the source material it was inspired by, subplots that were obviously gutted and left on the cutting room floor, character choices, stakes, and consequences that don't really affect the overarching narrative going forward, or honestly, character choices, stakes, and consequences that are non-existent and leave no impact even in its own show, then do you really even have a show to begin with? I don't think so. I don't think that qualifies as anything more than an idea, which is exactly what Echo is. And while I could easily categorize and put this show into a niche that was just set up and used as the first initial stepping stone for the character of Kingpin in the street-level universe Marvel is looking to pay off in the Daredevil series and more than likely the next Spider-Man movie, which is admittedly, and I don't think I'm in the minority here, a much better idea with much more interesting characters than the show we all just watched. Again, when your show is just as half-baked as a holiday cookie, what are we, the audience, supposed to do? Praise your show for just being set up to more highly regarded characters than the characters I'm supposed to be investing in now? I don't know, just seems pretty backwards in my eyes, but I'll be damned if I get outclassed by Marvel's work ethic and sheer determination to release this cookie to the public. So with that, let's hop into the oven and talk. Okay, so much like the episode count, but not like the execution, we're going to make this short and to the point. Picking up after the events of Hawkeye, where Maya Lopez seemingly blasts a hole in Kingpin's face off screen, with no double tap and apparently satisfied with the outcome, with a pat on the back and a job well done, Maya hops on her motorcycle and decides to take her talents back to South Beach. <clears throat> Sorry about that back to Oklahoma for some awkward family reunions, as well as to heal up and strategize her moves going forward. Besides from some characters deciding not to meet other characters because it's not their episode yet, you're not really missing out on much until episode 3 when the show finally decides to start and Kingpin reveals himself to Maya as very much not dead. Shocker. With the intention of bringing her back to his side as Queenpin, in her words, or killer, I don't know, the show doesn't even know. Point is, the entire premise of the show is based around a pretty basic back and forth of 
Will she? Won't she? With a heavy helping of poorly choreographed and nonsensical action sequences, when the dialogue just starts to fall short from the 6th grade writing level. Which let me tell you, usually doesn't really take that long. Meanwhile, you're shown flashbacks of the strong women of the yesteryears in Maya's clan. Which is crazy, because her name is Maya Lopez, so to be fair to say, I was relatively shocked to find that she wasn't of Latino origins, but what do I know? I'm just some bloke on YouTube. <laughs> to sum it up in the best way possible, Maya's clan has been blessed with the power of plot armor, passed down through the strongest women in her clan's past to present, and manifesting in quote-unquote, just the right time when you need it most. Beautiful. And while you might be thinking to yourself, wow, that's a pretty incredible but extremely vague power, you would be correct in thinking such a statement. But we'll get into that a little later. With the table set for the... epic rematch between uncle and niece, will Echo have the strength to come out on top against the menace that is Kingpin, even though she's already done it once before? Well, the studio themselves have already spoiled their own show. <sighs> This is starting to get a little too negative, so let's just get into... Okay, so while the character of Kingpin is starting to become more and more of a Toontown character the more and more he shows up in non-Netflix MCU projects, Vincent D'Onofrio is still him. Despite the brain mush dialogue that he has to work with and lack of credible people behind the scenes to engage his physical prowess in the right way, pretty much looking like the studio is desperately trying to sink his ship at every turn they get. He still easily steals every scene that he's in, and it's relatively obvious that a simpleton show such as this snooze fest is way above his performance grade. As mentioned before, the show could have easily just been called Kingpin and served a much better purpose, not only financially, but in the eyes of the audience and the narrative that the MCU is trying to set up. In spite of all of the flaws that the MCU carries now in terms of writing and characterization, his performance alone still keeps me hopeful for the Daredevil show, the Spider-Man movie, and the street-level universe idea that he and Charlie Cox has been trying to cook up. But otherwise, there's not really much else going on here, so... <sighs> I can't believe I'm about to reiterate this again, dating all the way back to the Black Widow movie to kick off Phase 4, the entirety of the Eternals characters, Namor and Wakanda Forever, the Teletubby versions of the Illuminati, Ant Daughter, Mo Doc, and Kang from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Dumbass, the MCU has a huge power scaling problem. Not only in terms of sheer physical abilities like with Namor or the Eternals, but an insanely terrible problem in terms of introducing absolutely broken abilities into the world of the MCU overall. To only shrug them off in the future because it no longer fits the brain dead story that they were trying to write in the moment. I'm sure most of you know where I'm going. While yes, Marvel has seemingly made it a mission to give their new heroes vague power sets that can just go with the flow and adapt to whatever situation, Echo is truly the cherry on top. Through the ability of visions of powerful women of the yesteryears, not only granting her the power of plot armor, as well as sharing that plot armor like she's Thor in Love and Thunder, god, that is just another example of the vague and shit power scaling going on in the MCU. Maya is granted the abilities of the Scarlet Witch or Jean Grey. You choose with the ability to infiltrate people's minds and memories, manipulating them from the M side with only a single touch, like she's Rogue from X-Men. And if you need me to explain to you how absolutely broken that ability is, maybe another Phase 5 movie can help you wrap your brain around how Echo has pretty much just jumped into a S-tier character in terms of power scaling. She's trying to get in their heads. Sorceress, fortify your mind! Yeah, I'm sure that put it into perspective. 
Now, without talking about the cons of the show in terms of just the MCU, but a more focused look into the show specifically, the pacing is the show's true downfall. Again. It's unfortunate because there's just nothing going on here. In a show where you know the protagonist and the antagonist, well, mostly the antagonist, is going to be a big player in your plans going forward, you're going to run into a skill issue if you ask these current Marvel writers to come up with an engaging narrative that leads to character or narrative consequences with those type of constraints. Literally nothing changes in the lives of any of the characters from beginning to end. Maya is pretty much one of the most selfish people in the MCU and the worst type of character trope that you can ask your audience to get behind. A character that constantly puts the lives of the people that she cares about, or doesn't, I don't know, it's not really that clear, in danger because she couldn't finish the job in New York. Throughout the entire show, she states, claims, and shows blatant disregard for their well-being, but by the time the credits roll, you would have no idea that many of these small town people just had guns pointed at their heads yesterday. I guess what I'm saying here is that I don't really understand or see the point of a show like this existing, or at least existing in the term of the Marvel branding. I understand diversity and I understand inclusivity. To be honest, and I didn't mention it in the pros section, so I'll just mention it here. While I don't know if it's accurate or not, the sound design of Echo's action sequences from the POV of her disability was one of the dopest aspects the show had going for it. But overall, the story of Echo only served its purpose to prop up the upcoming threat of Mayor Kingpin for the future and hopefully brighter days of the MCU. And while I guess if you genuinely feel like you have some free, free time on your hands, and you're someone who has still been suffering through the mind-melting slop that has been the MCU, sure, go for it. But otherwise, I don't really see the point. Because in reality, it was barely even a show. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. It's unfortunate because I didn't want to dislike Echo. <sighs> Just another boring product from the MCU, I guess. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.